gentlemen, to another dry erase board video, back by popular demand. In this particular video, I'm going to be addressing and giving closure to for the punctuation of the correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar. I'm going to concentrate on the most common punctuations that I use in the grammar and that you will see in correct grammar. I'm going to give credit where credit is due. This idea came to me from a former student of mine. Uh, his name is Daryl. I'll just use his first name. Thank you, Daryl, for the idea. You keep coming back, Daryl. I admire your dedication and your tenacity. So I hope this helps you out, Daryl. I'm going to go through these things and give examples of every single one of them. So the first one, in no particular order, we have the period, the full stop. Then we have a colon or full colon. We have a hyphen. We have a dash, apostrophe, comma, tilde, and forward slash and ampersand. The period, of course, brings the thought and the sentence to a full stop at the end of a sentence, a correct sentence structure. Now, we also use them in abbreviations. However, when you use it in an abbreviation, normally it's underlined so that that abbreviation is to be taken as a whole. But the period at the end of the abbreviation would not be underlined if it's at the end of a sentence or the end of a word group. However, if this appears within a sentence, then that last period would be underlined. So you don't bring the sentence to a full stop. It's common sense. So then we have the colon, which in correct sentence structure represents position lodial phrases. And it actually represents specific position lodial phrases when correct positional se sequencing or concatenation is used. And I have lots of videos giving closure to that. Then we have the hyphen and the hyphen connects two facts to make a compound fact or two or more facts. So it connects two or more sevens to create a compound seven, a compound fact. And those, if your platform allows it, would also be underlined. Then we have the dash, not the long dash, but dash, which is used normally with number sets where you have a number, like a number one, and then a dash, and then what comes after the one. It just means that what comes before and what comes after are related to one another in a set, in a sequence. Then we have the apostrophe, which is used to show possessiveness within facts. So you say claimant's knowledge, claimant's, an apostrophe would come before the S to show that the claimant is possessing the knowledge. And the hyphen is also used in that instance to form the compound fact, claimant's hyphen knowledge. Then we have a comma, which in correct sentence structure shows sets of facts or groups of facts. So you could put, uh, uh, for the punctuation, comma, space, symbols, comma, space, hieroglyphics of the correct sentence structure. You see the comma groups together sevens. The tilde in correct sentence structure denotes location. So if you're writing a number or a date or an address or anything like that that could be considered a location, then you would use the tilde in front of that to give further closure uh, to that condition of state. The forward slash is used to represent the conjunction and. And then the ampersand is sometimes used to represent the conjunction and. Uh, but those are the main punctuations, and now I'm going to go into giving you examples of each one. So you see here, I've written out my name, my correct name, colon Jason Matthew Matthew colon Glass. I've used the period, and I've used the colon, and I've used the hyphen. This colon, because it's tied up against the J, represents for the, the position lodial set for the. 
Jason hyphen Matthew, the hyphen connects Jason and Matthew, which are both sevens, together to form one seven. And then we have the colon, which represents of the, because in correct positional concatenation, you have a cause, a concern, always at the beginning of a sentence, two positional audio fact phrases, for the facts of the facts. In this case, it's for the Jason Knight and Matthew of the glass. And then the full stop at the end, which is not underlined because I'm just writing out my name. Now you see that I've underlined the name. That means that this whole entire thing is to be taken as a whole. Well, this full colon represents a five, six, and then the name would be a seven. This whole thing would be a seven. I did not underline the colon at the beginning because it's not part of the compound fact. It's not part of the whole. You see what I'm saying? For the five, six, Jason Eiffel Matthew colon space glass, seven. That's how that works. Now I've given you a little bit of information, a little bit more information about the, uh, some of the punctuations here. We have a full colon, a tilde, and a zero. The tilde shows a location, the location zero. This is to be part of a numerical set. So the zero is a location. I put the tilde there, and then I have a dash because what comes after it is part of zero. It's related to zero. So for the claim of the facts is... And a lot of people will say, well, no, shouldn't the verb be R? No, it shouldn't, because the fact in the cause position of the claim is singular. The plurality or singularity of a verb is completely contingent upon the plurality or singularity of the fact in the cause position of the sentence. Is with the location of the psyche. So now you see what I did there. It's a location. It's a location. Psyche is a location. So I put the tilde there. I've made psyche into a location. With the possession and conveyance, the forward slash represents and. And then by the claimant's hyphen statement. So I've made a compound fact. I've underlined it. I did not underline the period at the end. And I also used the apostrophe to show whose statements, who the statements belong to. So now reading it backwards, because we, like a math problem, we have to check the grammar backwards to see if it makes sense, if the facts hold the same value forwards as they do backwards. So now this becomes the cause for the claimant's statements of the possession and conveyance, are. Now the verb is are because the fact within the cause portion of the sentence is plural. So now the verb must be plural, are, with the psyche of the location, with the facts, by the claim, period. Now here's another example of punctuation for you. Just like in the last set, we do the colon tilde zero one dash to denote that this is a location within the numerical set. And this claim is the zero one claim. For the claims of the knowledge, grace, honor, peace, and of the kindness are with the performance by the claimant. You see here I use the comma to group together facts. And after the ampersand here, which means and, I've put of the kindness. There are several different ways you can do that. In correct sentence structure, the conjunction is a neutral bridge between facts, sevens, or five, six, sevens. Okay, so the comma here um, groups together these facts: the knowledge, grace, honor, peace, and kindness. So let's check the pro Let's check the the sentence backwards. For the claimant of the performance is with the knowledge, grace, honor, peace, and with the kindness by the claims. Period. And the final example for any. Correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, claims of the facts are with the knowledge and closure of the correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar with the certification by a claimant's performance. So the punctuation I've used here, uh, I've used the period to create a correct abbreviation. And that's all underlined. Correct sentence structure claims is to be taken as a one whole. And we have of the facts are 
plural verb, because correct sentence structure claims is plural, are with the knowledge, forward slash, closure, knowledge and closure, of the, and then I abbreviate correct sentence structure again, notice I underlined all the way to the last period, and I also underlined the last period, so that way it doesn't bring the sentence to a full stop, you know it's an abbreviation and you keep going, with the certification by a claimant's hyphen performance, claimants has the apostrophe in it, which denotes that claimant is possessing the performance, you know whose performance it is. So reading it backwards, for claimant's performance of the certification is, with the correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar of the knowledge and closure, with the facts, by any correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar claims. And for those of you who would like an example of correct sentence structure syntaxing, it would look like this. Five six seven, five six seven two, five six seven zero seven, five six seven five six seven five six seven. Mathematically certified, forwards and backwards. Well, Daryl and everyone else, I hope this gave you a little bit more clarity and closure on how punctuation is used in correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. If you'd like to learn this wonderful technology, you can contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen, and you can apply for a correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar workshop. I also offer memberships on this channel so you can support the channel so that I can keep the channel going, keep creating this content, keep getting new equipment, keep everything up to date so that the content stays at a certain level. I thank you very, very much for your viewership. And I hope to see you in the next video. Let me know what you think in the comments too, if you feel squirrely. See ya.